Welcome to a video taking a look at translation. Here is an example of something that we might see in an exam. So is the question here says to translate a shape by the vector 2, 4. Now before we can go about doing anything about this, we first of all need to know understand what translate actually means. All that translate means is that you're going you're moving your shape around on the page um, and so you're drawing exactly the same the exactly the same shape in a different position without rotating it, without flipping it around, without doing anything to it. So it just looks exactly the same as it does in the beginning, but it's just in a new place. So for example, what I could do if I was to translate this shape P somewhere and I just it would mean that I'm moving it around, it looks exactly the same as it does, and I've just put it into a new position. And so what I could say is that I've now I've translated uh, my original shape P over to this point here. So that's the idea of translation. Now the second thing we need to get our head around is the idea of moving it around by a vector. So we generally will be given this column vector here so we've got a number on the top 2 and a number on the bottom 4. The number 2 simply refers to how far across on the x-axis we are moving our shape. The number at the bottom is how far up or down uh, we are moving our shape and that's on the y-axis we can think about that. So let's take a look at these four examples and hopefully it will start to make sense as we go along. So our first question asks us to translate shape P by the vector 2, 3 then to label it R. Now what I always suggest that you do when um, answering these types of questions is you start by tracing around the shape so I've kind of I've done that beforehand I've traced around this shape P now I'm being asked to translate it by the vector 2 3 so the number on the top that tells me how far across I'm moving so I'm going to move this shape P two places across now it's a positive 2 that means that I'm going to go along 2 to the right on my x-axis. I'm going, you can see here that I'm going up on my x-axis by 2. 1, 2. Now the number on the bottom is a 3 and it's a positive 3 so that means that I'm going to go up on the y-axis by 3. So that means I'll be going up 1, 2, 3. So my new shape would be in this position here. So once I have placed it in position, I'll then mark this position that I've now found and draw my new shape. And it tells me that I need to label it S. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. So that would be our answer to the first one. I oh, know it doesn't tell us to label it S does it? It tells us to label it, sorry, it tells us to label it R. So that's my first one done. Now let's take a look at the second one. So again it's asking us to translate shape P. So shape P was here by the vector negative 4, negative 4. So again let's take a look at the top number first and negative 4. I'm going to be moving this across. So the number on top tells us how far along the x-axis we're going. Now it says negative 4, so instead of increasing along the x-axis, I'm in fact going to be going backwards on the x-axis. I'm going to be getting lower. So I'm going 1 across, 2 across, 3, 4 across. Okay, and I've got 4 lower, and that's because it is a negative. I've gone down by 4 on my x-axis. Then it's also telling me to go down by 4 on the y-axis. So instead of going up like I did last time, I'm simply going to go down. So 1, 2, 3, 4 places down. So my new shape, which I'm asked to label S, is going to be in this position here. I'm 
going to label that S. Okay. So that's us dealt with the P. Let's take a look at um, translating shape Q. So it's the same idea for Q. Again, I've traced around this beforehand. And I would advise you to do that when answering questions like this. Trace around it beforehand and then use that tracing to then um, work out your translations. So we've been asked to translate shape Q by the vector negative 1, 5. So negative 1, 5. Let's take a look at our number on the top first. We've got negative 1. That means that we're going to move it one place backwards on the x-axis so across to the left by one and that's because it is a negative not a positive that I'm moving backwards then I'm asked to move five up on the y-axis so one two three four five so my new shape my translated shape is going to be in this position here and I've been asked to label that T so let's just connect these up and so I've got my shape T okay the last one we're asked to tra translate shape Q again and this time by the vector 5 negative 1 so look at the top number first, we're moving five places to the right on the x-axis. So the number on the top tells us how far across we're going. Let's do that first. One, two, three, four, five. I've moved five places across on my x-axis. And then the number on the bottom says negative one. So that means instead of going up on the y-axis, I'm in fact going to go down by one. So you can see there my new shape is going to look like this in this position here and I'm being asked to label it U. Oh, that's not very neat. Obviously in an exam you would use a ruler to to do this and your translated shapes we look a lot, a lot neater than mine do so um, that would be our final answer there just to recap then simply the number on top tells you how far across you're moving a shape the number on the bottom is telling you how far up or down you would move the shape